Archer City, Texas, with a population of 1,862, has two really notable things that have happened in its history. The high school football team in 1964 won the state championship. And in 1971, a local guy named Larry McMurtry turned the novel that he had written into a movie that was directed by Peter Bogdanovich. That movie was called The Last Picture Show. It had a very modest budget of $1.3 million, but it went on to receive eight Oscar nominations. The film really skyrocketed the careers of everybody involved, especially the young actors. Sybil Shepard, Randy Quaid, Timothy Bottoms, and Jeff Bridges had their careers shot into high gear. It's set in the early 50s in one of the loneliest Texas towns that you'll ever visit. It's basically an aching portrait of the dying West, and it focuses on the daily lives of three futureless teens. Sonny, played by Timothy Bottoms, Dwayne, played by Jeff Bridges, and the adored rich girl, J.C., played by Sybil Shepard. It's not only about them, it's about people they bump up against in this lazy town, including Cloris Leachman, who plays the lonely housewife, and Ben Johnson, that owns the local movie theater. Johnson is called Sam the Lion, and he steals every scene that he's in. He's not in many, but he does talk more than he usually does in most movies. He sets these theater screens on fire. If you've never seen his portrayal of Sam the Lion, you definitely need to watch this show. There is no doubt that he is one of the best character actors that you'll ever come across in the movies. His soothing Oklahoma voice just draws you into him. He's so easy to listen to and such a pleasure to follow in a movie. That's the reason I feel that any movie that he's in gets ratcheted up a few notches just from his presence. Nobody knew this better than John Wayne. Ben's performance in the movie is only 9 minutes and 54 seconds long, which makes it one of the shortest performances to ever win an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor. Cloris Leachman is an absolute standout in the film, too. The last scene of the movie was printed on the first take without any previous rehearsals. She wanted to rehearse the scene, but the director didn't want her to. He felt it might ruin the spontaneity of it if she rehearsed it. After she had completed the take, she told Bogdanovich that she felt like she could do it better. He looked at her and replied, No, you can't. You just won an Oscar for that performance. His sense of direction paid off as she won the Academy Award for her performance. The director originally offered the role of Sam the Lion to Jimmy Stewart. He really liked the part, but he was already committed to a TV series, and he couldn't get out of it. The role was then offered to Ben Johnson, who eventually took it and ended up winning an Academy Award for it. But he didn't really want to do it. He felt like there was too much talking for his character, and he didn't like that. He'd rather be on horseback saying nothing. Eventually, his friend, director John Ford, told him to go ahead and take this role that he shouldn't play second fiddle to John Wayne forever. Upon selecting the town of Archer City, Texas, as a filming location, the production designer, Polly Platt, and the director, Peter Bogdanovich, and bear in mind these two were married at the time, they decided that the town should look really bleak and colorless. They considered quite a few options for making it look this way. They thought about painting all the buildings gray, And then they contacted their friend Orson Welles and talked to him about the viability of shooting this film in black and white. Welles told him, heck yeah, that's the way it needs to be shot. He was a big proponent of black and white photography because he always felt that it made the actor's performances much stronger and appear more believable. Sybil Shepard and Peter Bogdanovich became lovers during the filming of the movie. He was married, had children, and what made it even harder was that the production designer, Polly Platt, who I just mentioned, was there every day. They continued to work together until the project was finished, but it was a terrible strain on both of them. 
There was a real-life drama that was unfolding during this filming for the director, the director's abandoned wife, their kids, and now the beautiful model actress Sybil Shepard was included in this mess. Bogdanovich's wife absolutely hated Sybil on the set, and you can understand why. Later on in life, they went on to reconcile their relationship and became close friends. They went on to work together a few more times on some more of Bogdanovich's productions. The famous director loves telling the story to people how he spotted Sybil's lovely face on the cover of Glamour magazine, and he's the one that decided to make her a movie star. But this didn't last forever. By 1978, he was flipping through different magazines, and he came across the aspiring playmate, Dorothy Stratton, who was 18 years old at the time. He ended up meeting her at the Playboy Mansion at a party there and decided to cast her in a comedy that he was doing in 1981 called They All Laughed. During the shooting of the film, he decided to romance her too. He did this on the sly. Once again, he takes this young, beautiful star and they move in together. But this is only briefly. Before this picture could be released, Dorothy Stratton's husband, Paul Snyder ended up murdering her. After Dorothy was killed, it took him forever to get his life and work in order. Everything was just completely discombobulated. He needed time to heal because he was completely destroyed. Now, what makes this story so much crazier than it already is? And this is one of the reasons I'm including this in this discussion about the last picture show is that one of the crucial things in the healing process for him was moving Dorothy Stratton's teenage sister, Louise, better known as LB, into his mansion shortly after her death. He later went on to marry her. It seems really strange, but it's actually not that unusual for May-December romances to work. It's just the accumulation of all of these and the way these strange interactions develop that make it odd to me. Bogdanovich claims that he edited the film himself, but he really just didn't want to have his name listed as an editor in the credits. He's always stated that the crew disliked him on the film because he always ate with the actors when he was on location. He wanted to mold their performances without outside influences. And it's been reported that he fired a crew member when this crew member told Sybil that she ought to smile more for the movie. Initially, it was Sal Minio that introduced Bogdanovich to this story and gave him the novel to read by the little-known Texas writer Larry McMurtry. Minio had wanted to play in the film himself. When an adaption was written, by the time that was done, he felt he was too old for any of the principal roles that were showcased in the film. Now, Sybil Shepard was cast with the option of backing out of her nude scenes if she desired to do that. She only agreed to do these after she asked the opinions of the three other female co-stars. They all told her to do it, so she did. This was in-your-face nudity. And it was pretty tough to get the studios to get past the censors when you had a film that had a scene like this. When she filmed this nude scene at the swimming pool, the rest of the cast was not actually in front of her. They were filmed separately, so only the cameraman, the sound man, and the director were present at the time that she shot it. Because of the nudity involved, there were some problems with distribution in certain areas of the country. The city of Phoenix banned the show because they felt like this clip was too obscene. Eventually, it went to a federal court, and it was declared safe for viewing. The last picture show is a small-town coming-of-age story that's a sad and moving classic filled with unbelievable, impressive performances from the actors involved. If you've never seen this movie, take the time to watch it. You'll be glad you did. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.